I bet that you have gotten many times in your life. Why are people not kind all the time? What happens and they become so selfish sometimes? Is it something that they're born with? They're born self-centered or they become more selfish or they become unkind? Do they have valid reasons to become unkind? Let's explore that. Hi, I'm Vasis Sarandopoulou, psychologist, and I'm here in Anti-Loneliness in order to explore relationships and mental health with you. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel and you don't miss any video that is coming every week. Now, what do we mean that people are not kind? Let me give you some examples. For example, you have probably met people who take your turn in the queue and they don't care. There are people who don't help you, for example, when you trip and you fall. Um, the people who don't volunteer to carry your groceries uh, when your hands are full. And when I say people, I don't mean generally people. It can be your friends, family members, your partner. Eh? It can be somebody who uh, doesn't know how to comfort you or doesn't comfort you when you're feeling sad. Or somebody that you're working with, but they go behind your back and they badmouth you at your colleagues or at your boss. Or people that don't even ask you how was your day and, and they don't know what to do with you when you're struggling or somebody who's talking only about themselves and their own lives. And that makes you wonder, how can you be so selfish? How can you be so self-centered? We tend to believe that these people have no feelings, no empathy, no understanding. They don't see anybody outside of their own bubble. We tend to judge them as self-absorbed, self-centered, selfish, narcissist even, or even robots. But we are here not to judge, not to label, but to explore the truth. And the truth can be more complicated than this. To start with, somebody who is not so comfortable with comforting somebody else or aligning with their feelings and understanding somebody else's feelings can be a person that belongs to the neurodivergent spectrum. What does it mean? It can be somebody who is in the autistic spectrum, somebody with ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, somebody with dyslexia or with Tourette syndrome. There are many types of neurodivergent individuals out there and sometimes we don't know them, and that's why we're too fast into judging these people. But that can be one valid reason. Huh? Let's go a little bit deeper. Another reason why people are not kind is because they don't know how to be kind. And this is something that I've seen in my practice many times. The people that they haven't been taught by their family how to tend to other people's feelings, how to be compassionate, how to offer help. They haven't seen that. If we don't see that, we cannot repeat that behavior. We are born self-centered. When you're a baby, you don't care whether your mother is tired or not. You're just crying because you want your food, even if it's the middle of the night. So we are born self-centered because we want to get our needs met. But eventually we start learning that there are other people around us and we need to synchronize our needs so that we can all be happy. We learn how to include others in our lives. We learn how to care for them. So someone, it is very possible that they haven't learned how to be kind. They haven't learned all these social skills so that they can absorb these cues from other people that say how they're feeling and what they need. That's something that we need to learn. So think about that. Maybe they haven't learned about this important skill of empathy and compassion and kindness. Another reason can be if they have been brought up in a family with isolation and loneliness. And it can be many reasons for that. Eh? It can be because, for example, one of their parents uh, died and the other one was grieving for a long time. So each one of them learned that it's better to stay in our own bubble isolated, without sharing what is going on inside us, because this is too much. To stay with our own pain, because we couldn't carry anybody else's pain. And that can be why somebody learned that 
They need to attend only their own feelings and they need to care only about what's happening inside them because other people don't want them in. Even though that's not true, this is the lesson that they have learned. They learned that no one cared about their feelings. They learned that caring about other people's feelings is not an essential part of relationships. They learned how to survive by themselves. And this is what we call emotional neglect. And we don't feel safe within our emotional world and the emotional world of other people. If you don't know what to do with feelings, it can be very scary to be even with your own feelings. So that's why they isolate not only from others, but also from themselves. Another reason, and that can be even more overwhelming, is when somebody has gone through trauma, relational trauma, when they have been abused, betrayed, bullied, and they have learned that they are not important in other people's lives. They have learned that actually they are a burden. Actually, they are guilty. It's their fault for whatever is happening in other people's lives. Doesn't that make them be more protective to themselves? Of course. They learn that other people are dangerous. They learn that I have to keep other people at arm's length because if I go closer, I may get hurt again. And again, I repeat, it may have nothing to do with what's happening now in their lives, but they have been exposed to that traumatic experience for a long time that now is very difficult to erase that information from their brain. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So you see that people are actually scared. It's not that they don't care about others. They're scared or they're scared of caring about others. That's what keeps them at a distance from you. So there are many reasons. Eh? So before we judge other people, because it's easier to label other people uh, as selfies, it's actually more helpful for you, for them, and for the relationship if we try to understand them, if we try to see what's the motive behind that, what's their coping mechanism behind that. And I'm not saying that we should do that with everybody. Eh? I'm talking only about the important relationships in your life. Because when you get a better idea about why your partner is not so smart or fast in getting the signals that you send in regards to your feelings and your needs, then you can see how you can work together so with your partner in order to create more safety in the relationship, in order to create more empathy, more understanding and more connection, of course. It's possible. I've seen it. Trust me. The only thing you need is some curiosity so that you can understand your partner and, of course, your partner to start explaining their own perspective. Well, let me know if you have questions about that. It's something that I'm working a lot with my clients to help them understand why other people around them behave in the way that they behave. Because, it's, as I said, it's very easy to criticize, but it's more difficult to understand. And I would like to help you with that as well. Let me know your comments, your questions in the comments area. And of course, let's continue that conversation. And of course, don't forget to have a look at the website so that you can get your 40 page guide on self-care. See you soon.